Welcome back to The Haunted Beard. Well, I have been reviewing the Halloween series, and today I'm talking about Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. This is the first time I've ever watched this, so I'm going to give you my thoughts. Well, this, uh, this film came out in 1988, and part of the marketing when it first came out was kind of the, a 10 years later sort of story. 10 years later, and Michael Myers returns to Haddonfield. And so this came out 10 years after the original film. Michael Myers comes back, and this time he is trying to hunt down and kill Laurie Strode's seven-year-old niece, uh, Jamie, who's played by Danielle Harris, and Loomis also comes back, and he's obviously trying to stop him. So that is the story, and there is not really anything more to it than that. Michael Myers is on the run, and somebody's got to put a stop to this guy. So the uh, the film starts out, uh, the, the first 10 minutes I, I thought were pretty good. It starts out, I mean, just even with the opening credit sequence, you kind of, you get just some nice static shots, just sort of uh, capturing just kind of Halloween fall type images with the credits over. It just kind of really does a good job sort of establishing sort of the mood and the atmosphere that it's going for, reminding us, you know, where we are, what time of the year it is, all that. And then we, uh, it, it opens up with this ambulance going into this uh, sanitarium institution to, to pick up Michael Myers and transfer him. And, um, you know, it's, it's dark, it's rainy, it's, you know, it's kind of classic horror stuff, right? It's a dark and stormy night, and uh, the score here is kind of, kind of, it's subtle, but it's kind of brooding and menacing, and you kind of get some sort of just some deep sort of bassy notes and stuff like that, and you know, you're going into a sanitarium, and it's it's creepy and all that, and, and they pick up Michael Myers, and they start transporting him, and of course, he wakes up, and, you know, he kills the ambulance crew, and we get, the, the first kills are a, a pretty decent kill. Is that a state owned gym? No, I still don't understand. <laughs> One of the things the film doesn't really provide much of an explanation for is how part two ends. Part two ends, there's a massive explosion, and we are under the impression that Loomis and Michael Myers both die. And that was really the original vision. However, the audiences just wanted to bring Michael Myers back, so they had to come up with a way to bring him back. And so there's like a guard early on says, you know, oh, he almost died in a fire kind of thing, but obviously he didn't. So... That's really the only explanation you're given uh, is that he almost died, but he really didn't die. And so, you know, there you go. That's that's as deep as it gets. But, you know, whatever, you kind of just got to accept that if you're going to be on board for this. So other parts of this film that I thought were pretty good is I thought Danielle Harris's uh, performance was overall pretty good. There's some parts that like I feel like with pretty much all of these are going to be a little dated and the acting's not great. Kid actors are obviously always difficult, right? But uh, there are some there are some scenes and parts of her performances that I thought were actually pretty good, especially a scene later on in the movie uh, involved uh, right after the rooftop scene. I thought she was pretty good. <laughs> oh, come on, Rachel. Please come on. Don't be dead. You can't be dead. Come on, Rachel. <laughs> There's another cool scene where uh, Loomis and the sheriff are driving around and they pick up Jamie and uh, Rachel and they think Myers is after him and Loomis sees Myers and he's about to shoot and then there's another Myers in another spot and another Myers in another spot. They're all wearing the, the Michael Myers mask, right? And I thought it was just kind of a nice touch, sort of a fake out moment that now you don't know who he is or where he is. Uh, I, I liked that scene pretty good. I thought it worked well. Is that him? Is that him? Yes. Loomis. Oh, Christ, Doc. Unfortunately, that is where my praise and compliments for this movie come to an end. And it just pains me to say, because I wanted to like this. I really did. 
but man, it uh, it just kind of let me down. Uh, let's uh, we'll just start picking it apart, I guess. And uh, yeah, <laughs> the uh, the first thing that I have to say is the mask in this is terrible. Michael Myers' mask is terrible in this. I don't know what happened to the mask from the first film or what they did with it or why they decided to change it, but this mask is terrible. It's just so cheap looking, and it just it just makes him look goofy i think it is i don't know i don't find it scary at all so the mask is terrible now let's talk about the story and listen i understand what i'm watching here okay we're watching the fourth installment of a you know of a slasher series right so i'm not expecting some you know complex inception style plot here okay but man this is just so like, can you just give me something a little more than just Michael Myers killing people? Michael Myers killing people. That's it. And Loomis tries to stop. It's like, I don't know what's coming in part number five. And I, I guess I should give him a little bit of credit because of how this part ends, that they're maybe trying to do a little something different and, and you know, add a little bit of a, a different sort of twist with the next part. We'll see how that pans out. But it's just it's just very very simple. It's very very basic. There's just there's nothing to it. Michael Myers goes loose on a town and kills people and he's got one person in particular he's going after and Loomis has to stop him. That is it. Now you may be saying, "Well, come on, Jake, we don't watch slasher movies, especially 80 slashers for the story. We watch them for the kills." Well, the kills are not good. The kills in this, man, I was so disappointed. Now, I mentioned a minute ago that the first kill is pretty decent. But, man, I just felt like the kills in this for, I, I mean, this is 1988 slasher film, Halloween. And I've seen, I've seen other slashers from the 80s that came out before this that are bloody, gruesome, they bring some kills. But man, I just thought this was so tame and neutered and just like hacked down. Like I, I wrote in my notes, like this feels like almost a PG rated version in terms of the violence of a Halloween film. And now I know that's a bit extreme, but man, I just thought the kills were just not, not impressive at all. Some of them are like handled off screen so you don't even get to see anything uh some of them they just show the aftermath so you come you know you still don't get to see anything and then once that you do see you're just like eh it's just eh let's talk about the two main ones though and first off brady's kill which happens later on in the movie i still thought was really tame and edited down i mean there's a you know there's an okay little fight scene you know he's punching Michael Myers and swings his gun at him and stuff like that because he, he's out of ammo. And and then Michael just grabs him by the face and he kind of starts to squeeze his hand and you hear just like a little cracking sound and then it cuts away. And it was just like, it, it's like you're, you're going in the right, oh, and then it's just like, I mean, come on, man, like give me something more than that. And then the one that was so disappointing was Kelly's because the setup for this kill is so good and then the kill itself just lets you down it's like so everybody's in this house and they barricaded themselves in this house and they're waiting for the state troopers to come take handle michael myers right and so kelly the girl comes down and they got a, a, a sheriff or deputy whatever sitting in a chair facing the front door you know guarding the front door and she comes down and she sees him in his seat and he's rocking back and forth and then she goes over to light a candle and the candle lights up and the guy's dead against the wall and then she looks back and you realize it's Michael Myers was sitting in the chair and it's just like this great like fake out moment I'm like oh man that was awesome right and he gets up and then he just pulls out a knife or he pulls out the yeah he's got a gun and he sticks the gun through her chest and pins her up against the wall, but like they don't even show it. It's just cut so fast, and you just totally miss the whole thing. And I just couldn't help but like 
remembering back to the first film where you kind of had a similar thing where Michael Myers stabs a guy up against the wall. And I was saying how, like, if this movie were made today, it would be handled so differently. Now, obviously, Halloween 4 isn't made today. The movie's 30 plus years old. But man, even just in the 10 years, just the way it's edited and shot is so different with a similar style kill. And I know you don't get the blood in the first one, but at least you can see it and they show it and you get the full picture and kind of the full impact and the horror of it. That this guy just got stabbed through the chest and he's pinned up against a wall. And but this one is just edited so fast and it's just like it's just gone and over. And it's like you don't even get an impact of it. And it's just it's they just neutered the kill. They had such a great setup that I really like. And it's like they're just about to drop the cherry on top. But they just pull the cherry away and then throw the cherries in your face instead. And you're like, oh, come on. And it's just, uh, it was so disappointing. But anyways, it's just amazing how different this film feels in terms of just how it's shot and edited compared to that first film. And it's like, just in the 10 years, you can tell how much this movie was influenced by the films that came after Halloween. The Friday the 13th especially, but other slashers of the 80s and just how it's shot and edited and, and the way the, the kills are handled. And it's just like all the, I feel just like all the suspense and the tension has been drained from this just in favor of giving us these sort of just rapid fire kills. And and it's like if 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 they at least execute the kills well, then it's like it, you can kind of forgive the lack of, you know, much of a plot. You can forgive maybe, you know, some of the bad dialogue or cheesy acting and things like that. But this one, to me, it just it didn't even get the kills right. And it just it just misses out on so much of that tension. It's like I miss those shots where Michael Myers is, you know, lurking behind the characters and they have no idea. It's like we don't even get that. There's. I miss just even the just the 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 shot length and the distance of, of just sort of you know capturing the environment and just really seeing the scenery. I feel like there was so much of this movie that was shot like in in these sort of tight close-ups. Like you just it didn't even give it room to breathe. Like you couldn't see anything. And um, it's just it's just amazing how differently this is compared to that first film. And uh, yeah, it was just, this was a bummer. I really was hoping for this to kind of get back on track because I wasn't a fan of part three and uh, the kills in this really let me down. Let's talk about the ending. Obviously, the big sort of surprise ending is that Jamie is now, I guess, seemingly sort of possessed by Michael Myers' spirit and she is now sort of your your new killer. And I, I guess it's, I, I guess it's an okay uh, sort of ending. I, you know, they, they, they got to set it up so they can make another one of these, right? And so you, you're thinking of ways of what can we do to move this thing forward. And so that's the direction they decided to go. I guess we'll see in part five how they handle it and, and what they end up doing with it. Um, it, you know, in, in some way I kind of like it because like, okay, I, I guess I kind of, respect it that they are maybe trying to do something a little bit different with the film in other way it seems just sort of like kind of forced and random and so i guess i guess we'll see how it all pans out once uh once i watch the next movie so that's just my thoughts about halloween 4 overall i hate to say it but i was uh i was a little let down and disappointed by this one um i think in the end i'm probably going to give this like a Man, like a 3 out of 10. There's just not much there that I really liked or thought was well executed. Uh, there's a few parts, but overall, man, especially the kills just really let me down. And uh, just didn't really get a whole lot out of this one. But, oh well, that's the way it goes sometimes. But I'm going to just keep on chugging along. We're going to keep on keep this train rolling. And uh, we're going, obviously, next is Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. And we will see where this thing goes, and we will see you next time on The Haunted Beard.